I've adapted one of my favorite clay lesson plans using homemade air dry clay. You can totally do all of this at home. I will show you how to sculpt facial features to create a mask that is full of expression. If you love art, subscribe and support my channel. I promise I have got you covered during this quarantine. Start with the clay of your choice. If you click the link above, this modeling clay takes only three ingredients and it lasts about two weeks. I have made this clay about a week ago and it's still ready to use. It's a little bit more crumbly than your kiln fired clay. And I've done this mask artwork many times with regular kiln fired clay and the Amico brand air dry clay. You could do this with Play-Doh. You can do this with whatever you have on hand. So I like to compare this clay to cauliflower rice. It's good, but if you compare it to regular rice, you're gonna be disappointed. The first step is rolling a slab. And I try to do this first on my canvas that I use with my regular clay, but I realized that my air dry clay is picking up a lot of the clay dust that was left behind. So you're gonna see me scrap that idea in just a second. You could totally roll a slab with a rolling pin if you've done that before. If not, click the link above to show you how. And you know you're finished when it's about the width of your index finger. You're then gonna cut out your slab using whatever instrument you can find. I start with the shish kebab stick, then I progress to a butter knife. Um, it depends on what you have laying around. If you have ceramic tools, awesome. If not, get creative. If you're doing a human head, it's the shape of an oval. So don't forget the chin, it goes pointier down at the bottom. And I've discovered that making sure your edges are really smooth and don't have cracks in them helps the drying process later. To take things up a notch, I'm gonna ball up some newspaper, round it out and put it underneath my clay. So it's not just a flat slab, but it has a rounded mask-like quality to it. You certainly can do this on a flat slab, but I like the rounded effect because it makes it look more lifelike and mask-like. Next, I draw in my facial proportion guidelines. If you're unsure how to do this, a quick Google search of facial proportion guidelines will give you image after image of how to organize your face so it's true to life. I'm gonna start with this scary part, which is pressing in to create eye sockets that are in the middle of my face. Now looking back, my forehead is a little bit small. My eye sockets could have gone down a little bit and depending on your clay and how thick it is, you wanna be so careful that you don't poke all the way through. But if you do, it's not an emergency because we'll be adding eyeballs to this later. Now that we've done the scary eye sockets, let's do the eyebrows and they are a breeze. I really think they're the easiest facial feature of them all. Eyebrows are so important to show expression and that's gonna be the focus of my mask. I do want it to have proportion that's accurate, but I'm not really focused so much on realism, but I wanna show expression and mood with the way I arrange my facial features. If you've ever been my student, you've heard me say score, slip, and blend, but this is not kiln fired clay. And my modeling clay, all you need is water. And my tool of choice is a paintbrush to apply the water and you just blend it to itself. Easy peasy. If you are using kiln fired clay, check out my video on face jugs, which will show you how to attach all of the same facial features I'm showing you today. I get a little obsessive smoothing with this paintbrush and water because it's really fun and it kind of turns back to the mashed potato um, texture when you're doing that. So enjoy, that's part of the fun. Our next facial feature is much more challenging than the eyebrows and that is the nose. Start by placing a cylinder of clay between your eyebrows and ask yourself, is it too big, too small, or just right? Notice I already drew my guideline of where my nose should end and where my mouth should start. And you're gonna hand model this clay to look like a carrot. So you're gonna have a point on top and then the bottom you can press either into your palm or on your tabletop to create a flat shape. So it's like an elongated triangle, but to me it really does look like a carrot. Be as picky as you need to be. I always make these giant noses. I don't know why, I just think it's lots of fun. My noses are never dainty. So just stop when you feel like you have the right shape. 
Now, you're gonna hand model the tip of the nose to also have a triangular shape, and then you're gonna make your nostrils by sticking an object. For me, it's gonna be the end of my paintbrush up your nose. Okay, it's gonna look a little bit pig-like at first. Once you attach it to your face, then you can model your nostrils the best you can. Now, I've already told you I'm obsessive, so my problem is I overwork it. I get my nose on there and then I touch it and touch it and touch it until something breaks or detaches. So you wanna find a balance of blending it so it's sturdy and modeling it so it looks like a nose without breaking it. I would say a nose is the facial feature that I scrape off and redo because how often I go back and, and yeah, pick my own nose. It's true. You may nose you may notice, not noses, <laughs> you may notice that your clay is kind of heavy if you're using the recipe that I'm using. Um, and when you're adding heavy pieces like this big nose to it, you're gonna notice that it's gonna start to become heavy. So having that newspaper to support it is super important um, because as you keep adding to it, it's gonna dry, but it's not gonna dry faster than you're adding heavier pieces. So when in doubt, make your pieces a little smaller and thinner if you feel like your clay is breaking. And if you take a step back and maybe come back to it in 30 minutes or an hour, your clay will be significantly more dry. Next, carve a line, which is called the Cupid's bow. And the Cupid's bow is that indention in your face between your nose and your mouth. And the mouth is our next facial feature. So whereas a nose doesn't show a ton of expression, you could certainly wrinkle your nose or if you're screaming, your nose might wrinkle up, but a mouth, much like the eyebrows, shows tons of expression. So rage is the emotion that I'm trying to show. I wanted something really strong. And although I'm a pretty happy person, I always go for like really dark or really angry looking art because I think it's really interesting. You're gonna roll a coil, which you can see me doing on the table. You've done this before with Play-Doh. If you've ever made a snake out of Play-Doh, you know exactly what to do. Your mouth will be made up of two coils that are about the same size. The top lip should be a little bit thinner than the bottom lip, and you can make whatever expression you'd like. Maybe it's creepy and smiling like mine is right now. You could keep your mouth open, you could keep it closed. Think about adding teeth or a tongue, and your mouth shows tons of expression, so play around with your coils until you pick the one that makes sense for what you're trying to convey. I typically find it easier to attach the top lip first, get all the way around the edges with my blending, and then attach the bottom lip, especially if you're gonna do an open mouth, which is what I'm gonna start with. Remember the Cupid's bow, which is a terrible name for it, but that's what it is, and that indention needs to go all the way to your top lip. If you take your hand and touch your top lip, you can feel that indention, and so your bottom lip does not have it, but the top lip should have in the center, typically, a human has that going all the way from their nose and then it cuts down into their top lip. To jazz things up a little bit and to make my face more expressive, I'm going to add wrinkles to give my mask that rage expression that I'm reaching for. I'm imagining an open mouth screaming, and so I wanna really accentuate the lines that you have around your mouth. Now, you could stare at yourself in the mirror with your rage face or whatever expression you're going for, um, and the internet is right in front of you too. You can also Google um, rage facial expression or whatever it is you're trying to convey. I'm adding this by just rolling small coils that I'm gonna blend pretty close to my mask. So I don't want it to look and stand out like my lips or my eyebrows. I want it to be slightly raised um, so that it just gives it a little bit more um, form and expression. Time for the eyes, which is my favorite facial expression. Like the mouth, like the eyebrows, eyes show crazy amounts of expression. Roll a sphere, and then you're gonna cut that sphere in half. You could use your butter knife, or I'm using my shish kebab stick. The reason why you cut it in half is so that it changes the shape a little bit, and so it's not so heavy, adding a lot of extra clay to your mask. 
Once your eyeball fits in your eye socket, attach it with water being careful not to squish it because you want that really round shape. Your eyeball in your head is a big sphere. So although we only see part of it through an eyelid, it's a circle in there. Speaking of eyelids, that's gonna be an important step to make your eye look more realistic and to show expression. So you're gonna roll a coil about the size of the coil you use for wrinkles and lay it over it first to make sure it's the right size. Then you're gonna squish it with your finger so it's a lid and not a rounded shape. And remember, expression with your eyes, are they super wide open? Should they have a bigger lid so your eye looks sleepy or sad? And you can play around with the shape of the eyelid to create the expression that you're going for. This is a small shape, but it's easy to attach if you have the right size paintbrush. A winking eye is always fun, so then you would cover up almost all of the eyeball that you created. I'm gonna roll an even smaller coil that I'll use for my bottom eyelids and I'll save some for more wrinkles. This will help your mask look realistic and I usually make my bottom eyelid just a little bit smaller because your top eyelid covers more of your eye than your bottom. This is the smallest shape I've added yet, so be so careful when adding um, small shapes, but worst case scenario, you scrape it off and do it again. Air dry clay is really forgiving. I want to accentuate my angry eyebrows by putting some wrinkles as if my mask is screaming or scrunching its forehead up. And so I'm gonna use those same coils I made for my eyelids to give it that effect. I have found with this homemade modeling clay and other brands that I've actually purchased, carving into it is not as satisfying as carving into kiln dry clay or even the Amico modeling clay or air dry clay that I've used before that's higher end. So I'm gonna rely more on adding my details and I'm gonna rely on carving my details in. I've just found that to be a more successful way to do this. So instead of carving wrinkles, I'm adding them because of the crumbly nature of this clay. Remember, we're in quarantine, so we're doing what we can with the art materials that we have. Now that I have most of my facial features in place and already sculpted, I'm gonna perfect them and blend them until I'm happy with the effect. Now, if I were using a different kind of clay, I might add ears or horns or something extending off my mask. But for now, since this clay is a little unpredictable, I'm gonna focus more on just adding things to my mask itself so it doesn't become an issue. I'm keeping my texture really smooth because of the carving issues, but I will add small dots inside my eye to give it the illusion that it has a pupil. I just think this is an easy way to make your eye more lifelike, and you'll see me fidgeting with my nose over and over again until I get it right. With any three-dimensional work of art or sculpture, it's important to look at it from all angles. There's gonna be things that you notice and catch that you didn't see the first time if you're always looking at it from one way. One area that I don't want smooth is the eyebrows. I want to accentuate the downturned angry eyebrows and I do this by adding a hair-like texture with my shish kebab stick. So carving into the clay isn't ideal, but you can poke a little bit of texture on there. And I definitely want my eyebrows to stand out because touch your eyebrows, they're made out of hair. So it wouldn't be the same smoothness as the skin around it. 
I am most unhappy with my mouth. I feel like it looks more like my mask is confused or singing. And so instead of an open screaming mouth, I'm just gonna do a very dissatisfied frowning mouth. And although my original idea was to show anger and rage and to be really extreme, my mask kind of went a different direction as I was working on it. So even if you start with one idea, don't be afraid to change and edit it based on your mood and based how things go. You can always stick to a plan, but sometimes being free and going with the flow is a great way to get a happy surprise. Knowing when you're finished is always a struggle. So once you've smoothed, once you've perfected, don't overwork it. And again, I think it's a good idea to take a step away um, for 30 minutes or even just stand up, leave the room and come back in and look at it with fresh eyes. Letting your mask dry slowly is really important. But if you rush the process and it cracks, I'll show you how to fix that in my next video. I'm also going to show you how to use Crayola markers and how to use it like watercolor to create an antiqued aged effect. You can use acrylic paint, watercolor paint, nail polish, shoe polish, spray paint, however you want to decorate your mask is up to you. Check out my website thatartteacher.com for full length lesson plans, long form blog posts, and student work examples.